Hello, my friends. This is Alyssa Marino. Be sure to subscribe to DNC Digital. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy D from DNC Digital back with another episode of DNC Radio. My guest today is Alyssa Marino. The lovely Alyssa Marino is the hostess of Let's Get Serial podcast. Uh, so we're going to be talking about her podcast along with her experiences in wrestling. So Alyssa, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to chat with you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was cool. Uh, again, uh, as we spoke off camera, uh, you uh, worked for a, a few shows on Mission Pro Wrestling. How was your experience with them? Honestly, so cool. Such a, an empowering locker room. Everything just felt really nice. So well done. And the matches were so enjoyable. So it was a really, honestly, awesome experience being part of Mission Pro. What do you feel like they're going to be doing for women in pro wrestling, even in the near future? How do, how do you feel like their momentum is going? Oh, my God. It's such an upward trajectory. It's, it's amazing just to see who they're featuring, who they're bringing in, uh, you know, helping to elevate people that may not have been seen on such a wide scale and then bringing in some of these bigger names as well. So I think that it's really the sky's the limit and they just keep pushing it further and further and further. So I'm really, I'm excited to see what they're going to do next. Yeah. And uh, so I've done a little bit of research on you, so I'm going to do some deep cuts and probably open up some <laughs> closets that you don't want to open, but oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we do here. No. So, um, I want to know what is it about wrestling that gravitated you during those times when you used to watch it with your great grandfather? For, for me, I think it was always just the larger than life element of it. Mm. Um, it to be really honest, when I was watching it, when I was like a little, little kid, it was the yeah, fact yeah. that it, it, it kind of scared me. You know, I would look at like Paul Bearer and the undertaker and be, and be like a little disturbed, which mm -hmm. I think made me just want to see it that much more. <laughs> um, but then when I, when I got back into it kind of as an adult, it was more so the element of being at live shows, it, getting to kind of experience the scene in Southern California and getting to just experience the feeling of being at a live wrestling show. I was I was hooked. Who were who were some of your great grandfather's favorites? And did you ever find yourself at odds on certain matches? You, no, honestly, Wait, actually, yes, we did because I liked Ric Flair. He's like, no, 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 he's a he's a bad he's guy. A bad he's guy. a bad guy. I'm like, but I like him. I don't right. get it. He's, you know, but I didn't really understand. Um, I can't even remember. I mean, I, th I think he obviously he loved Undertaker. Uh -huh. Um, I I can't really even remember what his favorites were, but I remember he had uh he had like the greatest matches of of rick flair he had like the vhs tape i'm like well you can't hate him that much can you you know like <laughs> you it, it's your vhs tape crap up i don't know <laughs> uh so you moved out to la in 2016 and that's uh that's where i read that you started watching it again yeah. and um so now as an adult as you said uh you know in terms of uh the entertainment being at live shows and now going into wrestling yourself, what did you learn about the production value when it comes to running a show? Oh my gosh, there's just so many things that are happening behind the scenes that I had no real concept of. I'll, I didn't have a whole lot of time as a fan before I started getting involved though. So I think taking like one of my best friends from college to his first ever wrestling show and and being completely in, in the fan perspective with him was really, really fun. Um, and then shortly after that, it was like, okay, well now I'm going to help set up the ring. Well, now I'm going because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be ring announcing or whatever the case may be. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think that I learned how much preparation goes into it that I, you know, when, when you show up, you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm ready to be entertained. I'm ready for a good night. I'm ready to, to, to see some action. Um, but yeah, then to realize like, okay, well I have. I'm doing commentary tonight. So I have pages of, of notes that I want to, you know, talk to all the wrestlers about. So definitely a, a different perspective for sure. So uh, it turns out you, uh, I believe you went to a show to help out, like you said, you know, ring crew or, you know, chairs and stuff and kind of somebody kind of looked at you and said, what would you think about interviewing now yeah. when, you know, everybody talks about getting opportunities and I, but me, I, I kind of look at it from a different angle where everybody gets an opportunity, but I just feel what they do with it is more so the equation to what you want to get the result out of. Uh, what is your approach to that when it comes to opportunities? And, and how did you feel that moment when they said, hey, you want to do some interviewing? 
for me, it's always the lead up is the worst part. So okay. as soon as it was like, Hey, um, do you want to do this? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm always hungry. Like, yes, please. I'll let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Uh, to then be like, all right, cool. Well, uh, give us a few minutes and then we'll get to you. Those few minutes were like <laughs> the most nerve wracking few minutes of my life. Like, do what I go I back do? to uh, send up the ropes or the what do I, what, yeah, what do I, it's, it's all like, yeah, it's stuff like that. Like that you don't think about like, well, what should, what do I do with my hands? Do I stand here? Do I stand <laughs> yeah, exactly. There? Do I, I don't know what, what to do with my hands. <laughs> yes. Like what, what do I do now? So, um, uh, with, with that, it was actually at championship wrestling from Hollywood. And I luckily had come from work the night before and I still had like my work blouse in the car. <laughs> I'm nice. like, all right, got that. My nice blouse. Always got your gear. Interviews. Always exactly. got your gear. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that that I think is something where um, I I I think a lot of the time people don't get the opportunity. So I felt very grateful and very lucky to have received sure. one. Um, so I knew that I wanted to make the most of that chance because. I don't think it's ever guaranteed. I don't think you ever really know. Like, okay, well, I'll, I'll have another shot. It's like this might be it. You know. Now, the, these opportunities that come up to you and and your response to them mm -hmm. uh, definitely is a you know, is it fair to say that there were learning experiences on how to approach a job rather than learning experience of the wrestling business in general? Because you went up to Tommaso Ciampa <laughs> to say, hey. Can I do commentary on practice matches? What made what made that light bulb go off? And can you credit your past opportunities to that moment? Uh, I think that for that, so that was at the uh, Evolve seminar that I had done. Right. And um, I, I think for me, it was one of those situations where he even said when he kind of was talking to the group, and it was mostly wrestlers, and there were a couple managers and referees. He said, he's like, do what you do best. Like, this mm -hmm. is your chance to show what you can do. And, uh, and I think in that moment, I was like, all right, well, this is what I do. You know, I, I used to manage, but it's not, it's not my best. I don't want to go out there and like half-ass this opportunity that I flew out myself out to Chicago for to, that's something that I'm like only kind of half into, like, I want to go full on into what I felt most com confident in and what I felt like, this is what I do, you know? So I, I sure. didn't, I didn't want to waste that, that moment. And what was his response to it? I mean, did he did he kind of look at you like, hey, this kid wants to? Yeah, sure, why not? He was like, uh, yeah, I think you can do that. I, yeah, yeah, why not? And then it was really cool because then he actually like came by and like he like sat next to me while I was calling some of them, and he's like, oh yeah, okay, and like gave me some some feedback and just some pointers, and it was like, wow, like thank you very much. You could have just said like, yeah, okay, have fun, bye. Mm -hmm. You know, like I could have been blown off, but I wasn't, and that was amazing. What does that say to the different opinions where they say, you know, hard work and it'll, it'll come to you rather than, you know, hard work and go get it. Yeah. Closed mouths don't get fed. Mm. You know, I think that, I think that there has to be, a. you got to be that nagging person tugging at the pants. Like sometimes. And I, and I struggle with that too. Cause I'm like, Oh, I just don't, I don't want to bother somebody. I don't want to bother. <laughs> yeah. Them like people are busy you know uh -huh, there's a uh -huh. very good chance that you know you're not bothering them you're just reminding them so it's like finding that <laughs> balance um but yeah i really do think it's something where very rarely is something just going to kind of fall in your lap out of nowhere uh, of course yeah you i know? mean that's that's more like happenstance and just sheer luck but yeah i feel you know i people are like hey you've interviewed this guy you interviewed that guy how'd that happen i'm like I went and I asked, bro. Like, I don't know what else yeah. to tell you. I, it's, it, you know, I, and it takes me back to a, a certain story about Michael Jordan where they were just at the end of practice and they were doing like half court shots. Mm -hmm. And one of them was like, I don't know if I can make it. What about you, Mike? It's like, I'll make it. And they're like, oh, well, you, you know, you're so sure of it. He goes, why would you, why would you not be sure about a, a shot you didn't even take yet? Why are you worried about that? Yeah. You know, and, and it kind of, it kind of delves into our world. Uh, you are also in wrestling media and interviewing. What is it about interviewing? And, and I mean, you can probably remind me and I can probably agree with you, but for the, for the lovely listeners, what is it about interviewing that people don't understand is that hard? The, the research, the prep stuff. Mm -hmm. The yeah. last thing that I want to do is talk to someone. Luckily, I, 
luckily that just like through my time in the world, I've, I've been able to make some really great friends and, and great friends that have been willing to come on the show. And if I am sounding like I don't know what the heck I'm talking about, they are, you know, more than sweet, you know, but, but for the most part, it's like, if I, if I talk to someone that I, this is the first time I'm ever speaking with them, I don't want to sound like I have no idea who they are. Like, what, what? like Hey, what's it like? interviewing people oh god i hate or, or you know i always see yeah. interviews where'd you get your start or who trained you and yeah. i'm like bro you're supposed to know that stuff you know and, i don't want to be redundant i don't i want them to have a good time talking to me you know it's exactly what i feel i feel like i have an audience first of you know yourself uh in particular and if you have a good time then the, the you know the it'll just come across as a great product because it'll yeah. just be entertaining so you have a schoolmate in jake atlas is that yeah. correct Yes, we do. Uh, how do how do you how do you feel for the guy? I mean, uh, he's he's already you know defined he's already defined himself as a success, and he's got so much more time to go. What's what's that what's that dynamic like between you and him? And how did you feel for him when he got signed? So it, when um, when he got signed, obviously I was super super excited, and I had actually just gotten word, but I hadn't really told anyone that I would also be moving. Uh, so it was it was one of those things where he's like. You, He's like, how about, are how you? about you? Yeah, what about yeah. you? What's happening? Uh-huh. Uh, but honestly, I, I remember the final Santino show that we had. I remember he was the main event and it was him and, and Joe at Chaos. And, uh, and I remember everyone kind of came into the ring and we were all like hug everyone, like wait for their turn and like hug and hug and Jake. And it was, it was something really special where it was just like, Hey, like see you there. Like, you know, it was just, it's, it's such a, it's such a family feel. And then both of us being out here, we didn't really have any many other friends at the time so it's like we were able to get even closer then and honestly i'm just so happy for him and everything he's doing i'm like you got a ding dang action figure like yes like i'm so, <laughs> I saw, I'm I so saw that the other day i was like hey look at this guy yeah. um miss marino can you tell me who kathy from hr is oh <laughs> yes i can yes i can um so when Descri- I first have- describe it to me, if, if I if, if you can humor oh. me. Oh, absolutely. So uh, yeah. Kathy from Human Resources. Um, <laughs> I already hear it. <laughs> is the the death of fun. Um, she is. She, well, she, she was she was a, a general manager. She was an authority figure uh, okay. in a, various promotions throughout Southern California, uh, just to make sure that things didn't get too wild, didn't get too crazy, you know, um, making sure people weren't coming off the top rope, uh, making sure they were using correct verbiage when they were addressing mm. the audience, no swearing, gotta watch your t-shirt designs, you know, making sure there's nothing too offensive. Um, and she was the manager character that I started in wrestling as. Now, where... I, I, I need to know who it was. I mean, there's always uh, some kind of inspiration uh, yeah. from your real life that you take it from. And for example, uh, you know, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, do you watch The Walking Dead? Uh, I, I fell off a couple seasons. I, in, I fell but... off a couple seasons, but there, there's a character that he based his entire, uh, his entire character on his uncle, on one uncle. And so who is, uh, where, where did Kathy from HR originate from? Kathy from HR originated from the fact that I was actually working in human resources at the time. <laughs> so I, I was plucking these, like these phrases, these just nonsensical phrases that were particularly, I think, made to alienate people like synergistic endeavoring. Mm, I was like, yeah. what, like, what does this mean? Uh, but I would take things like that because I just thought they were, they were funny. Um, but when I first was getting the character going, it was a little bit of right to censor. It was a little bit of, of Drew Gulak and his PowerPoint presentations. I just wanted yeah, to, yeah. it was a little bit of the, the movie Drop Dead Gorgeous with the very strong Midwestern accent. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I wanted it to be just this grating heel persona that just came in to ruin everything and uh she was clotheslined in the middle of the ring and has not been seen since so ah and uh, you know uh how ironic that right to censor pretty much won the battle because we are now a in a pg era i i I always look back at right to censor and i'm like they are so underrated as heels that heat that they would get was I, I can only imagine that you couldn't hear yourself in the arena. So um, 
I, I'm assuming that, you know, Kathy from HR is like that one lady during the, the weekend convention at the business meetings and you got to sit through her speech and I, I, I'd imagine, but I mean, I hope she's okay wherever she is. Oh, me wherever too. I, w- I, I wish her all the best. She's probably the best you know. endeavors in her future. Yes. 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 Wishing her the best in- so uh, you were lucky enough to uh, work in NXT, and uh, NXT is a uh, is a you know critically lauded brand in professional wrestling. Um, you know, they uh, on paper it's developmental, but they have some of the best best talent. So, how do you how do you feel about being surrounded by such talented people? Does it make you step your game up? And how was that transition between you know? maybe being a big fit or a big fish in the little ponds and now swimming with sharks. Oh, I mean, it was, it was, I more supportive than I was expecting it to be. Like I was expecting, like I was definitely intimidated of course, mm-hmm. because I was coming from uh, like, I knew what I was doing on the independent scene and then right, coming right. into um, things being a bit more fine tuned and having presenting this global company when i'm when i'm in the ring ring announcing um i honestly like alicia taylor was such a huge help to me she uh, guided me through everything and was an incredible resource and a lovely lovely human being so um i I think that was something where i i don't think i was expecting that and the fact that she was so like hands-on and and helped me out through everything was honestly it, it I think that made me want to work harder because I wanted to show her that she, her investment of time in me was, was not. A, yeah, yeah. Okay. Totally understand. Is there, is there anybody in there that maybe has a personality off camera that would surprise most of us? Oh, not that I, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Like it's been, it's been a bit. No, no, um, it's, it's been a while. I understand that, but I, I, I imagine you have some good stories. I mean, I've, I've, I've spoken to Josiah Williams also, mm-hmm. and um, he's such a cool guy and he's yes, great he music. Is. Yeah. He's such a cool guy and he has great music. And, you know, he was just telling me how like street profits, for example, like Montez Ford is exactly who you see. Yeah. And I, I can only imagine at a contrast, if there's anybody that like, Oh man, I didn't kind of expect it from that person. I mean, I will say, and to go back to it, Tommaso Ciampa, you, mm-hmm. you know, still a very intense person, but I don't think I was expecting the, the level of like, uh, not like friendliness, but, but just so re- like approachable, you know, not he as intimidating uh, as he would. Definitely has the image uh, along with Gargano, just somebody who just loves wrestling yes. and would do anything to just make it better. I remember um, when The Fiend uh, debuted at that SummerSlam, Mm-hmm. where uh, Gargano was part of the watch along and he almost looked annoyed at how like people were talking. He goes, yeah, like, shut up. I want, I, let me, let me just take this in real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we went, we went over Alicia Taylor. Uh, seems like a lovely lady because you talk about yeah. her in other interviews and how much, how much she's uh, helped out. Um, now, you know, don't mean to bring it up, but the day you got that call, mm-hmm. When you have when you have something in front of you that may or may not be taken away, what kind of fear sets in, or is it more like a okay next step, or how how does how's that thought process from that day and and moving on to your next step? I don't know how healthy it is, but I'm very much an okay. Well, crap. I had that conversation today with my priest. I swear to God, because this is my coping. Like I can only control what I can control. And whatever comes to me is like, okay, well that sucks, but uh, next one. So, uh, so now, um, okay. So that was the way you, you took it. And what is your approach to your next step after that? I, I think it's the same thing. I, the same mindset I had, I think when I was on the independence was, uh, say yes to it and then figure it out. Nice kind of situation where it's like, mm-hmm. okay, if, if I worked hard enough to get an opportunity presented to me, I'm going to go for it and figure it out as I go kind of thing. Um, I think I'm always just trying to 
learn more and and keep improving and keep evolving. So it's it's now just finding that in different outlets. What is your biggest takeaway from your time with WWE that uh, you would say was probably your biggest lesson and your most valuable lesson? Honestly, prof- like just professionalism, mm-hmm. just, just the fact of going going into new ventures and presenting myself in the most professional way possible, um, showing my my respect for anything that I go into by how I treat it and how I how I present myself, how prepared I am for something, whatever whatever new opportunity it is, um, and and just the level of seriousness that I take. Um, so I was having this conversation with, uh, because, you know, after the past year, and I'm not going to say it was only the past year, but there's just a lot of divisiveness in the country. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, even on Twitter, like I have signed off for days because I'm a very Zen person. Uh, the, the, over the past couple of years, I've become very Zen to the point where people feel I'm aloof to things. They're like, oh, you don't have any opinions on issues. I'm like, I do, but I, my my world's populated by my kid and my girlfriend. That's about it for me. You know, everybody Sounds else. Like a full I, world. <laughs> yeah, I, I, everybody else. I hope for the best. I love you all. I support all of you, but I'm very just like I don't want to subscribe to any negativity to the point mm-hmm. that I'm like, God, like Twitter and Facebook and then the social media in, in in its entirety. When it comes to the wrestling fans, sometimes you guys just use the word hate so much or you're insulting somebody you don't know or you don't even let a story pan out. You know, for example, Nikki Cross, 10 seconds into her new character, people were just writing her off. I'm like, guys, just chill. It's not that serious. So there are, you know, the... I, you know the same deal with with you when you say it's a it's a very family oriented thing between you and Jake and your and your schoolmates and people at NXT and the, the friends that you've kept along the way. I feel like it's like wrestling, music, and food can bring anybody together. Yeah. If if I were to walk right by you, Alyssa, and I didn't know you, and you wore like an NWO shirt, and I'm like, best friend, that's it, that's it. <laughs> like hit hit me with a too sweet. And that's it. We're, we're, let me get right. your, your Instagram and we're, we're going to be uh, calling each other about wrestling. But so in your, in your professional experience, because you've obviously been at that level, what is it about wrestling, professional wrestling that supersedes all these barriers that allows people to come together with no reservation of who you voted for or what God you pray to or where you're from or any of that? What is it about professional wrestling to you that helps break all these barriers down? I think to me, it's the fact that it is something so universal, you know, and it's something that's been, I mean, throughout the ages in one way, shape or form, we've had entertainment and we've had combat, you know, like Mm -hmm. we've had, we've had this kind of balance throughout probably most of of human history. Um, So I think that it's something where it's such a, like a niche interest that it's yeah. like as soon as you find someone that also likes it you're like aha gotcha <laughs> yep talk to you me are about not it. getting away exactly um so i think that it's something where i mean obviously there are tons of wrestling fans right yeah, but course. they almost feel so scattered that when you f- it, it's like when you find one out in the wild it's like okay <laughs> here we are you're so. like, shh, 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 don't scare it away I'm going to go sneak up on it just to see what happens. No. Um, but yeah, I think that it's something where it, it appeals to kind of our, our, our instincts and our like d- desire to be entertained, our desire to be thrilled, our interest in, you know, seeing the bounds of the human spirit, you know, how far is this underdog going to push against, you know, this, ginormous opponent that they have you know mm-hmm. it some of it calls back to just some of i think the 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 biggest human instincts around and i think that that's something that we can all kind of relate to i mean kathy from hr everyone had a boss that they didn't like as soon as i read that i'm like i'm thinking of i'm thinking of that one lady that fired me from a certain job that i had i'm like oh my god that's her there are so many different 
characters that I think in one way, shape or form, we see a connection to either somebody we know and love or someone that we wish we didn't know and we don't love so much, but it, 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 it elicits a response. In terms of entertainment, I just feel like you can easily pull from other aspects of entertainment, kind of like how, I mean, Lion King was essentially Othello, or excuse me, um, Hamlet, or wasn't it Hamlet? I think it was Hamlet. Yeah. So like, I think it was Hamlet. So like, I remember uh, when I used to train and I, I learned how to do a couple bumps and a couple of spots, mm-hmm. but my trainer, he goes, look at Toy Story. I was like, what about Toy Story? He's like, imagine there's the, the veteran that everybody loves. And then there's this new guy that comes in mm-hmm. as a tag team partner. And now everybody loves him. And the veteran thinks like, oh, I got to take this guy out. So the veteran yeah. turns heel and then there's a redemption story. And I'm like, oh my God, totally. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I went, like Toy Story, you went deep. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this. And I, I do want to move on to your podcast because that's such a great format. Uh, last wrestling question. If, you know, if Paul Heyman said in an interview, like, if you don't get it, you just don't get it. We love this stuff. I mean, I can't explain to you what I feel for professional wrestling. I, if you don't get it, you just don't get it. So if somebody were to come up to you, you know, like, you know what, I'll sit down and I'll watch a match with you because I don't understand this stuff. Uh, I, I want to see why you love wrestling so much. Show me one match. What match would that be? Oh, geez. Um, man, okay. So you can give me like five. It's fine. I don't want to, okay, okay. I don't want to, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Um, okay. So honestly, some of my favorites, some of my favorites from when I first started getting back into wrestling was anything that involved Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Um, I think, yeah, I think that their, their friendship slash rivalry, how it would go uh, back and forth and just the ebbs and flows of their relationship and how it manifested in the ring was uh, fantastic. It was, it was phenomenal and I, I absolutely loved it um I mean I feel like God, I'm like anything with Stone Cold um Hogan and the Rock I feel like there's 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 so many to choose from. Yeah, I know <laughs> it's it's, it's so kind of hard so like that one jaded you know not jaded the one skeptic you know, person in your life is like, fine, I'll sit down. I'll watch something with you. Get me into this. Make me understand why you love it so much. I think for me, I would, I would, I think for me, I would probably just because I feel like it's what worked for me. Um, Mm -hmm. I would show them something from the era of uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, just because I would want them to see the the packages that any everyone goes back to like oh all those those packages too tell me god the wrestlemania 17 package i still go back and watch it i still go back and watch it um could you show them the packages instead of them i'm just kidding yeah just the back (laughs) oh the the the, uh the my sacrifice videos from the 2001 era that stuff makes me tear up sometimes um i want to say maybe like jeff hardy undertaker the ladder match from raw yes um Maybe Kurt Angle, Rey Mysterio, the opening match of SummerSlam, because that was it, they gave him ten minutes and they 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 were just amazing. Um, but moving on to your podcast, let's get serial. I want to ask a very important question, and I feel oh like it's the most important one of this time that we're going to be talking. Okay. How do you pour your, your cereal? Miss? Oh my gosh, easy, easy peasy. So. Um... I, I like to do a long pour. I do cereal first. Thank Always. you. Okay, thank you. That's that's Always. that's what. Okay, yes, cereal first. My buddy Stefan Johnson, that I'm sure maybe you've seen on TikTok or Instagram, is a milk first advocate. Can't do it. No, I can't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. It is in fact incorrect. You, <laughs> that's right. It doesn't make any sense. I don't. I don't understand the 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 science behind that. The so only time. You're, you're the only pour. time that milk first is appropriate is if it is leftover milk from your first bowl of cereal and you are adding more cereal to even out your milk. That's exactly. Uh, Exactly. But yes, I, uh, I do a long pour cereal first, and then Mm -hmm. I do a long pour of my milk until it rises ever so slightly. And then I dig it. 
is it just below the, the top layer or yeah. do you have cereal up here and milk here or is it milk here and cereal? Uh, no, no, you, it's mostly cereal on top. Maybe a slightly meat milk is peeking through, but for right. the most part, it is full cereal, untouched, crispy layer on top. Very, very well done. Uh, give me your discontinued cereal that you would love to bring back. Oh, wow. If we could bring back um, uh, Rice Krispies Treats cereal. Ah, yes. Or Original Recipe Waffle Crisp. Wow, the Waffle Crisp. Yeah. It's been so long since I heard about that one. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I, I think I once got that. This is, this is how deep it goes. I once got a box of Waffle Crisp for Christmas as one of my Christmas gifts. I think it might've been in my stocking, like just poking out, like not fitting at all. Um, yeah. Oh, this is full circle. This full is, this circle. is yeah. full circle. Yeah. Now, what is it about a late night bowl of cereal that makes it taste so good? Is it I the think, danger? Is it the danger of outside of the proximity of, of cereal time? Well, that, and I think the fact that like, for me, most of the cereals that I eat are super sugary. So I'm like, Ooh, what kind of messed up dreams am I going to have tonight? Like, I can't <laughs> wait. You know? So I think that's, I think that's what it is. I mean, even like, like watching wrestling late at night, it's like, Ooh, God, I'd like, I'm all like my endorphins are rushing. I'm about to go to sleep. Who knows what I'm going to dream of, you know? So what made you decide to use this format, uh, in your podcast? So it initially started out as just me eating cereal by myself, just talking to the camera. Uh, I would do like some live streams just to kind of like talk to, talk to people that had been like at wrestling shows and knew me from either ring announcing or commentating or whatever. And then people started bringing boxes of cereal to the show nice. and giving them to me. I was like, oh my God. This is Saving money on groceries. Absolutely. Very well done. I'm like, I'm getting fed. This is it. I am nice. happy. Um, but then I just realized that like I would bring boxes of cereal to shows and like just have them in the locker room for people to like eat, whatever, have fun. And then I was like, well, what if I like talk to people? Like, what if I like sit down and like have a bowl of cereal with like my friends? I can do that, right? And yeah. um, it was he Heather Monroe and Jake Atlas. And we were, it was before a show. We're all like, hey, like you guys wanna try these weird cereals? I think it was like a Toy Story cereal and uh pop tarts cereal like you okay. guys wanna, like eat these cereals and like review them with me and luckily they said yes and they were very cool with it we had like one of my first guests on let's get cereal and it's it's a very there. it's a very pressing issue even though it's a small one what kind of uh response did you see from guests and did, what what have you seen from their cereal habits to make you maybe define a little bit of their character hmm uh, I've had some guests that have poured milk first, and uh, it's very like that upsetting. Is, is where it stops here. It stops here. I feel like it was done. <laughs> it was done on purpose. It was it was uptown Andy Brown, and he did it on purpose to irritate me, nice. uh, which is understandable. But um, no, I think it's you sense so many people's like mannerisms through how they like like having cage on, and he's just like oh, like like just <laughs> I saw that one. through this bowl. I'm like. Right. Okay. I met Brian Cage. Uh, <laughs> I want to say it was like a year and a half ago at, at mm -hmm. a con. And I asked him for his time. And um, I'm just not well, very well versed outside of WWE. That's just that's just the way it is. And so um, I looked him up to, to make sure I, I asked the right questions. And so I saw Brian Cage bodybuilder slash wrestler. Now mm -hmm. I went up to him and my first question is like, so you're, a, you know, your bodybuilding going into wrestling he goes, nope, nope. I swear my face pale and i'm like he's gonna eat me but thank god i was able to bounce back and now brian cage is a great guy but um I, that's I'm like assuming, the worst fear though oh my <laughs> god as an interviewer i was like <laughs> but then thankfully I, I did some research and i saw he was a very good friend of chris canyon so my next question was about chris canyon and you know giving him the mask of the mortis character and yeah. afterwards he goes hey man you ask good questions i'm like swear to god i thought you were gonna whoop my ass like at the first one oh he goes no gosh. it's okay he goes people look at me and they think that you know but um but yeah so on let's get cereal you you eat cereal with with uh, uh your interviewee and it just it it looks like it's so much fun does it allow that media layer to come down when when you're interviewing somebody and they kind of kind of sit back and their guard is down i mean i I think so. And honestly, it's, it's also one of those things where, like I said, for the most part, there are very few interviews I've done with people that I don't 
like know pretty well, you mm -hmm. know, like, like Renee Paquette was, was the one where I was like, Hey, let's make this happen. This is a dream interview. And um, exactly. uh, it was something where she, she was so sweet and so kind and so generous with her time. And I think that she's just a cool person. So like for that, it was, she was already very like easygoing and, and, and chill to talk to. Uh, but for the most part, I think it's the fact that like, I already have some semblance of like rapport with, with my guests. Um, and we keep it lighthearted. Like, I'm not going to ask tons of wrestling questions. I'm not there to quiz them. I just want to, you know, like, what were you like when you were a little kid? You know, mm -hmm. like, what do you, what do you do when you're not wrestling? Stuff like that. So I think yeah, because it, it definitely gives them uh, like, oh, I don't have to talk about wrestling or I don't have to talk about what I do. I remember interviewing uh, Ross Marquand from The Walking Dead, and he was just like, I can't talk about Walking Dead too much. I'm like, I know you don't even want to talk about Walking Dead. And he's like, what? I'm like, you're here all weekend signing all these autographs, and I'm sure you're done talking about Walking Dead. Yeah. Kind of laughed at it. So I did my research, and I was like, you know, the questions I hit him with, he was like, oh, man, that's, you know, he got so, like, relaxed, and he goes like, oh, this is great, you know, and and um, so... um. I do want to ask, uh, you know, besides your podcast, you're doing something else to expand your knowledge and to uh, kind of broaden your horizon. How is your Duolingo class going? Oh, it's great. I, uh, I actually, <laughs> I just, um, Como I finished... stai? Como stai, Alyssa? Uh, wait, como, com, como stai? Like Italian or como no. es? Como it's como stai. It's como, como stai. Yeah. yeah. Um, See, I don't know if I'm going to answer you in Italian or Spanish at this point because I've been doing both. Um, but uh, sto bene, grazie. So ah, there you go. Okay, Very nice. okay. I was like, Oi. Io, io, me, io me chiamo di. Uh, that's oh. about all I can remember. Oh, I took, I took Italian. There you go. I took, a, I took Italian for about three years, and I think, I think at this point it's just conversational. I can't, I can't, you know, sit there in Rome and you know talk. And I remember I had these uh, when I was a when I was a waiter. I had this. Canadians uh, coming in, and I can tell their accent. I was like, "What do you guys speak naturally?" And like, oh, we speak French. Great. You know what? I want to know because we get a lot of French Canadians in this area. Tell me how to take care of the table. I'm gonna write these questions down that I normally ask a table. So you guys just yeah. translate it for me. So they gave me the paper and they gave me all the things. And then he goes, "Next week we're gonna come and we're gonna test you." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I I asked them those questions in French and they answered in French and I was like. Yeah, you didn't teach me that part. Yeah, That's you didn't not... teach me the answers. <laughs> so how's the how's the Italian Duolingo going? You know, the Italian is great. Just finished uh, all my courses. So now I'm just going through to get to legendary status. Let's, oh, the boss. Yes, status. yes. I need to get to boss status now. You're uh, being it's... King Koopa now. Yes, exactly. Uh, Italian is something that I, I took for five years. I took four years in high school and a year in college. And uh, you don't use it, so you lose it. Mm -hmm. And no one to really practice. So I lost everything. And um, now it's something where I speak to my houseplant Paolo in Italian. Uh, oh. But when, when I speak, it's a very weird hybrid between I'll start in Italian and I'll end in Spanish because I'm doing both languages at the same time. And they're very similar at times. So it's uh, very confusing and fun. And it's a little mental exercise. <laughs> How does Paolo feel about that? Well, I mean, Paolo's cool. He's uh, he's a little parched right now. Mm. Uh, and and it's funny because I was just about to say he is uh, thirsty, and I was going to say it in German. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I was like, ah, oh, Paolo, have a durst. That's not it. I don't. That's even, not it. And he's just looking at, at you and maybe turns turns this way against the sun. And it's like, I'm gonna I, get some. I'm gonna I get can some like light. see the little potter moving. Just like, oh, this this, this girl, this girl. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh. What is your favorite scene from Clue the movie? Oh my gosh, Clue. Um I love Clue. I at the end when it's the like eight different like alternative and like it's just what this what, happen? What, what, yeah, <laughs> what is yeah, what is your I'm favorite like, scene? Um I think that the classic flames on the side of my face, heaving, breathing breaths, heaving breaths. Uh, any any scene with Madeline Kahn in it, if that's an option. Um, yeah, I think that that movie is something where there are so many elements of it that I didn't realize were funny until I was older. 
yeah 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 but oh my uh, god is, is that a reflection of your comedic taste as far as cinema no i think that usually i go for much goofier silly things like obviously yeah. clue has some silly moments but right. like i yeah maybe it is i, I mean it, 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 are you partial to maybe uh you know like a slapstick like naked gun or uh Spaceballs, Spaceballs. Uh, anything Mel Brooks, pretty much like Spaceballs is one of the greatest. Yeah. And and the funny thing is, I never watched one second of any Star Wars movie. And I know I might lose viewers because of that, but um, I I don't have to see that to understand like what goes on in Spaceballs. No, exactly. It stands on its own. It is fantastic. And don't worry, I lost points with Watts when I did my Star Wars serial episode with him, and I had to tell him <laughs> that I have not seen any star wars movies all the way through and he hung up on me um <laughs> <laughs> he just hung up on you so uh now with this past year uh everybody was stuck at home and kind of needed to do something to maybe feel creative or just let have an outlet you know um and it and it became kind of a diy year can mm -hmm. you tell me about uh cutting your own bangs when you were a kid did you ever try to do that again last year so last year I was lucky enough to actually because because hair salons were closed. So I was wondering, maybe she wanted bangs last year, and she tried to do that when she was a little girl. Uh, I definitely did it in college, and it oh, was, was it in college? Okay, it was a well. I no, you know what? Because my my mother actually did like go to hairdressing school, so she could she could cut my bangs, and it was it was okay. But I did it myself in college, and it was. Um, it was not good uh, to the point that one of my friends was like, oh, maybe they'll look better once you straighten them. And I was like, I just straightened them. It was, it, was it just like oh, this, like pretty much? It was teach you, teach you, teach you. Like it was terrible. It was a bad look. Uh, last year, like right before everything shut down, I was lucky enough to get a trim. And then mm. uh, when I was back in, uh, I spent some, some time in Philadelphia with my family and my mom kind of trimmed them up for me again. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just grow them out. I'm done. Nice. Um, geez, because when I read that story, I'm like, oh, I got to bring that up. That's oh, just, yeah. especially with it, especially with uh, last year where everybody kind of learned a new skill and, you know, tried to do everything themselves. But um, Miss Miss Alyssa uh, Marino, it's been so cool. And you know what? I, I forgot to ask because that's another question I wanted to ask you. You uh, you had a chance to go back and hang out with your buddies during the great debate in uh, for WWE. So who is Miss WrestleMania to you? Oh, Trish Stratus, 100%. Okay. I was able Easily. to argue that point. I feel like she made such an, an evolution in all of her WrestleMania appearances that I, like I, that, was, that was it. Like that had to be her. Like she may not have had like the biggest moments, but the moments that she had showed a growth. They showed an evolution over time from like being at ringside barely really being involved that much to then like having an incredible rivalry and an incredible moment with Nikki James. It was like, come on. Uh, I, I think you may know her. L Ella J from a wrestling gal podcast. She mm -hmm. invited me over to go over the top 50 women's list. Yeah. And then in, in turn on my last episode, I invited her over to do the top 50 tag team list. Um, the tag team list was more difficult for me than the women's list because when i looked at the women's list i'm like stratus of course easy of course she's top i remember speaking to jazz and i asked her about that time when they were feuding mm -hmm. and jazz is like she was the only one that never complained never complained about me whooping her ass because i i wanted to break her in uh, not in a disrespectful way but i wanted to make sure that they told me like she's a star we want to work on her so i worked on her and she didn't ne she never ever complained and um, there's there's a that's a testament about that woman, and I would agree with you that she is uh, Miss WrestleMania. Um, go, going back to though, as as, as uh, it's a question I forgot, your time as a ring announcer. Um, do you feel like you are the last commercial for that match before it happens? Because you can see the flyer, you can see the commercials or the build up or whatever, whatever. But the ring announcer when they set it up, it's the last stop to try to get people to buy in and get excited about this match. Did you ever feel that kind of responsibility when you were in there? Uh, I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever like thought about 
that actual element of it, but I always thought about the importance of setting the tone. Like if I, if I, you know, screw up somebody's name, or if I, if I giggle during a very serious match moment, like that messes up everything that, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that everything goes to hell, you know? So yeah, I definitely think that there is like a certain reverence and a certain, uh, can't even think of the word, but like it, it's 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 a level of um, like of, of importance that needs to be put on the match by the ring announcer for sure. Definitely, uh, Miss Alyssa, where can they find you on social media, and where can they hear your podcast? Oh, absolutely. So uh, episodes of Let's Get Serial are on YouTube at uh, YouTube slash Alyssa Marino, and that is every Saturday, usually around one p.m. Eastern. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at a y y underscore Marino. I haven't been on TikTok in a hot minute, but I'm also a Marino uh, over there. And I have t-shirts at, uh, at t-shirts at below the collar.com slash let's get cereal. And my Patreon is now running uh, patreon.com slash let's get cereal with exclusive content and sneak previews of the episodes before they happen. <laughs> awesome. All those, all those links are in the description, guys. Uh, this is D. You can find me at DNC Digital on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Make sure you guys hit me with a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't seen it. Uh, if, if you're new here, because I do interviews every week and I have some awesome people like Alyssa. Um, Alyssa, I thank you very much for doing the show. Um, maybe a preface to a future collaboration that we may or may not have. Yes, but um, I will definitely be getting my <laughs> cereal bowl ready. Uh, everybody have a great night and take care of yourselves.